So how do you grow your channel insanely fast? Let's find out. So you wanna make money on YouTube, but there might just be one thing that you're unsure about. Isn't it just complete luck when it comes to videos going viral? It is definitely not. I mean, sometimes it could feel like that, but there isn't any like some sort of thing that you can indeed control to make sure that you've got the ability to go viral. Even then, I agree, to some extent, it kind of feels like it's complete luck or there's some luck involved, but there are definitely things that you can optimize for. And isn't that outside of your control? That's a great question, and it's something that I wondered as well when I was first starting on YouTube. That is, until I discovered a certain secret after months of trial and error. In a certain secret, let's see. I'm always interested in finding out about secrets, so this should be good. In this video, I'm going to share a simple strategy with you that you can implement right now for fast results. Now, before I reveal the secret, in video number one within this video series, I revealed- I like the editing, by the way. Like this kind of like animation style looks very cool. Now, I'm very excited about this one because I'm gonna reveal something to you that's helped me get over 100 separate videos with over a million views each and- Damn, that's good stuff. A hundred, so that's already a hundred million views. Quick maths. Um, but it's good stuff. Over a dozen videos with 10 million views each. And this is how you can truly- Good stuff, those are insane numbers. Go viral on YouTube. And the secret is something that I call similar metadata. Now metadata is what tells YouTube what your videos are about. This includes your title, description, and tags. Yeah, this is pretty much anything that you can give to YouTube so that they can figure out what your YouTube video is about so that they can push it to the right audience. For example, if you just randomly upload a video about, about cryptocurrency, but you title it like, I went to the pool today. Are you stupid or something? Like, it's not gonna make sense, right? Then YouTube is confused. They're not sure what your video is about. And because of that, they cannot really show it to the right audience. Whereas if you title the video that is about crypto and you give it a cryptocurrency related title, description, tags, thumbnail, then YouTube knows, hey, this video is about cryptocurrency. Let's show it to a cryptocurrency audience. Now here's where everybody goes wrong when it comes to metadata. They put drastically different titles, descriptions, and tags on all of their different videos. And by doing this, they're not taking full advantage of the YouTube algorithm. And this isn't just a missed opportunity. By doing this, their channel is literally leaking views. Now the secret when it comes to doing this is to have a set group of tags. And yeah, this is what I do on my main channels as well on my cash cow channels, as well as my personal channels. I do this everywhere because it just works. It's also very easy because if you've got the same ones over and over again, you don't have to keep doing research or try and find them or come up with them. So it's also very convenient. Keywords that you put on every single video on your channel. And this puts viewers into what I call suggested video feedback loops, where they see one of your videos and then ideally the next result within the suggested video tab is another one of your videos. And a certain percentage of people will click to the next video and they'll click to another one. Therefore you turn one view and however much watch time and everything else you got from it into multiple other views. Yeah, if your session time because of that is gonna be extremely high, YouTube will start pushing your videos like crazy. For example, if you would, after this video, watch another one of my reaction videos, then another one, another one, another one, and a lot of people do that, my videos are bound to go viral. Tons of more watch time, and more importantly, more session time. And YouTube loves session time, because the longer you can keep people on YouTube- The more money they make. <laughs> yeah, boy. YouTube will reward you with all the views and subscribers and everything else you could ever want. And the way that this works practically is that you can get just a little bit of search traffic and then you can then leverage that into tons and tons of suggested video traffic. And I've done this over and over again on all of my different channels and it works like magic. And a lot of the big channels out there do this as well. Now this isn't to say that every single video should have the same title, description, and tags. No, your video should be about the specific subject they're about, but if you're sticking to a single niche. In the last video, I gave you 24 of the best niches to do this in. If you stick to your single subcategory or niche, it's really easy to implement the similar metadata if you know how to do it. Yeah, like I just said, if you've got similar topics and you can use similar tags and it still makes sense to do that, then that's perfect. On these reaction videos, I always have the same tags. I always have the same kind of description, the same kind of titles. Of course, it depends on the video that I'm reacting to, but it's always within YouTube automation. And I try and keep it as similar as possible so that we can keep getting that recommended traffic. Now, you know what niche to choose? 
I introduced you to similar metadata. And now I'd like to reveal to you one of the biggest secrets that I ever learned on YouTube which is not guessing. Almost everybody out there complicates growing on YouTube so much, and they assume that you have to find some unique niche that no one's ever done before, and you have to do your videos in a brand new way that's never been done, and that could not be further from the truth. And sure, you could discover some new trend doing that, but more than likely, you'll be among the hundreds of channels that produces videos that nobody cares about. Yeah, because the thing is, if you're just getting started, especially as a beginner, you kind of don't understand how it works. So for you to come up with stuff that would actually work out is kind of like a miracle, right? And why do that if you can already do stuff that is proven to work? And then you as a beginner could learn from that. You can simply apply it. You know, it works. So you're not just guessing. And then once you get to that point, so for example, where I'm at is right now or where I'm at right now, I could probably come up with stuff myself because I know how it works. I've got the experience to do so and I can then get that going. But if I were a beginner and I would start right now, I would just copy what already works and not try and cut stuff myself. And the good news is that there's tons of channels out there that you can use for inspiration. And I always tell people not to guess what's gonna work, but instead to model what has already worked. They might be saying, Matt, isn't there too much competition then if there's tons of channels already out there doing this? And that's a- I mean, yeah, but kind of no, because the thing is on YouTube, YouTube is based on recommended traffic or homepage traffic. So if I watch a football video about like top 10 skills, I'll probably watch another one because I enjoy them anyway. So if I upload one and you upload one, I could still watch both because I enjoy both. And that's a great question that I get asked all the time. And my response is that saturation up to a certain point can actually be a very good thing. And this is very counter- Yeah, because like I just said, if then people start watching 10 videos about football, your video could be the 11th one. Intuitive to the way most people look at this, but a lot of the big YouTubers know this. Saturation up to a certain point can be a really good thing because you can then get in the suggestive video feeds of all those other videos that are succeeding. And as long as you produce content at least equal to or better than what's working within your niche, meaning you get more audience retention and watch time and people stay on your videos, they click to your videos at a higher percentage, then you can still get a ton of results no matter what niche you're in, no matter how much saturation there is. I do think there can be a point where there might be too much saturation if you can't produce videos equal to what's- Yeah, exactly. Or let's say that there's a lot of saturation but your video quality is the best of the best and you've got unique angles at it then still you can actually succeed you can actually then capitalize on that saturation right but if there's a lot of saturation but your videos are not the best they're not so good and you're kind of like in the lower ranks or like lower tier quality in that niche then it's probably not a good thing also everybody talks about too much competition on YouTube but what most people fail to account for is yes the number of channels on YouTube has risen but most people fail to account for that the number of new viewers on YouTube has also risen. Yeah, so the supply is going up, but the demand is going up too. Correspondingly. So yes, there's way more channels than ever, but there's way more viewers than ever as well. And out of all that quote unquote competition out there on YouTube, how many of them really know what they're doing? How many of them just have- Not many guys. It's probably less than 5%. Have luck sometimes, and sometimes they have a video take off and succeed. How many of those people actually have a strategy that they're following? You know what? 5% is still too much. It's probably 1% and then even less if you really look at like the top of the top on YouTube. That number gets smaller and smaller. And the bottom line of this is that as long as you can produce videos at least equal to or better than what's working, it doesn't matter how much competition there is. Also, when it comes to modeling what's working, that doesn't mean that every single video has to be modeling some other video that did really good. You can always leave room on your channel for experimenting and trying new things. Typically, I leave like 10% of my content strategy open to if I ever have a crazy idea, you know, maybe this will work, or I just thought of this, let's test it out. I leave that space open, but the majority of the content that my channels produce is modeling what has already worked and trying to improve upon it. And there's so many different ways you can improve upon content quite easily. You take three videos, you take the best parts of each video, the most valuable parts in terms of entertainment or educational value, you put into your video and boom, your video does way better. Yeah, that should be like, depending on, of course, if you're actually good at making the videos or your team is, if you need a YouTube automation video team, by the way, check the link down below. But if you do that, like Matt is saying here, if you take what it wor what's working the best for free viral videos and you do the same and you probably even make it better, then your video should work out too. That is not to say that every single video you do that with will go viral or will do well. It will take some time to build that up. But if you just do that over a consistent period, then it's, it's gonna work out. There's no other way. So now you know not to guess when it comes to doing YouTube and you might be asking Matt, 
how can I practically implement this? And this brings me into my third part of the secret to getting views and subscribers and growing on YouTube. And this is how to find unlimited video ideas that actually get lots of views. And surprise- Yeah, that's a good one. Honestly, that's the skill you need in order to make this a success. So let's see what it comes up with. And surprisingly, this is quite easy if you know how to do it. I simply split up my video ideas with half of my video ideas coming from already popular videos and the remaining half coming from keyword research. In order to find already popular videos for video ideas for yourself, all you have to do is search your niche on YouTube, filter the videos that were uploaded. Yeah, this is actually pretty easy. That's what we do here as well for my cash cow channels, as well as this channel that you're watching right now. My researcher actually does this. So we type in YouTube automation, uh, how to grow on YouTube, making money on YouTube without making videos. And then we sim filter like this month and then the view count and we'll get the best videos from the month that we can then react to. ...within the last six months by the highest number of views and look for videos with at least 50 to 100,000 views on them. This shows you ideas that are working right now within your niche. Also, subscribe to big channels within your niche and you can use a tool called vidIQ to install a trending tab on every single channel page and if you click that training tab, vidIQ will show you all the videos that are getting the highest views per hour on that channel right now. Yep, that's exactly what we've put into uh, the Automation First video program as well. It's actually the exact strategy I use, which is kind of funny. I personally do in order to find video ideas is I go to that training tab and I look for videos that have a high amount of views per hour, the highest on that channel that were uploaded over one to three months ago. Because this shows you that even though these videos were uploaded a while ago. Yeah, because the thing is, if you don't do that, then it could still be from the audience. So just people that subscribe to the channel whatsoever. For example, if you would analyze my video from yesterday, it's probably still getting good views because I uploaded yesterday. Whereas if you upload it six months ago and it's still doing well, that means that it's currently performing and probably will continue to perform because it's getting suggested most likely, or it's at least ranking somewhere in the YouTube ecosystem for it to get more views. If you want to see more videos like this, please leave a like on the video, subscribe, check out the links down below for resources, and I'll see you next time. Have a good day.